We're holding Be'ez Hashem in Mishnah Gimel. This is Perik Aleph Mishnah Gimel. The Mishnah says like this. Antignois ish soichai. Kibel mishimen at tzadik. Antignois ish soichai. He was Makabel from Shimon at tzadik. That was the previous Mishnah, right? We're dealing with the Messiah. The Messiah is going from one to the other, starting from Moshe Rabbin and Harasinai, all the way down to us. And we're holding by by Antignois that got the Messiah from Shimon at tzadik. Who are you, Oimeh? Again, I'm not going to repeat this every single time we say this in the Mishnah, but as we mentioned yesterday, Rashi says whenever it says, Who are you, Oimeh? It means this was his phrase. He always said this. Um, Don't be like an Eved that serves his master in order to receive a reward. Rather, you should be like an Eved that serves his master, not to receive the ward. And then the Mishnah continues the next four words, which seemingly have no connection. But you should still have fear of the Rabbi Nishlonim, you should have Yirah Shamayim. Now, there's a few things we have to understand over here. First of all, many of you will recognize this Mishnah from the song, the first song. It happens to be Agav, it's a Mishnah in Perkyovis as well. For those of you that are seeing it here for the very first time, just to mention a couple of things before we understand the idea. Rashi, Rashi says over here, what's Ha? What reward are we dealing with over here? Rashi says it means um, it's actually this world, not the next world. The Rambam says, that uh, a person should never serve the Rabbi Nishalolam with an expectation to get something back. Right? That's not what we do. The Rambam says rather we should serve the Rabbi Nishalolam with Ava. That's how we serve Hashem. Not because we want something back, but because we love Hashem. And Hashem loves us. And because Hashem does everything for us, and we'll get to that in a minute from Rabbi Yonah. But, but the Rambam says that we should serve Hashem with love. Says the Rambam, that's the reason for the Hemshech of the Mishnah. Again, we just said, serve the Rabbi Nishalolam without expecting anything. Don't expect anything back. We serve Hashem because we serve Hashem. And then it says, Why? It says the Rambam, because until now we're saying, serve the Rabbi Nishalolam with love. That's how you serve Hashem. But always remember, always remember, Yir Hashemayim. You have to serve the Rabbi Nishalolam. There's also an aspect of Yira that has to come around at the same time as well, which is also very, very important. Now, Rabbi Yona goes a step further. Rabbi Yona says like this. Rabbi Yona says that, an amazing thing, Rabbi Yona says that an Eved, a slave, should not serve his master because he's getting supper, because he's getting a bed, whatever it is. He should serve the master because of the chesed that the master does for him. Says Rabbeinu Yoyna. And Rabbi said, this is a gavaldig yisoyed in our lives. How do we serve Hashem? How should we lechatchila serve the Rabbeinu Shalom? We should stop for a moment and think of everything the Rabbeinu Shalom has ever given us and everything he continues to give us. And serve Hashem because of everything He gave us. Not because of what He's going to continue to give us. Not because of what we want Him to give us. But because the Rabbi Shalom has given so much. Rabbi Shalom, I love you. I just want to serve you. It's almost like when a person is in the ultimate marriage. He's in a marriage that he should be in. Which is where he has so much deep appreciation for his wife and everything she does for him. He just wants to do anything for his wife. That's the ultimate, ultimate marriage that a person should try and strive for. Is where you have the relationship with your wife that you want to do anything for her because of... Look, not because if I do this, then she'll make me a nice supper tomorrow. No, that's not the reason I want to do it. I want to do it because I love her because of what she does. Says Rabbeinu Yonah, that's the pshat. So much ava, says Rabbeinu Yonah. That's why we have to serve the Rabbanu Shalom. And that again answers why the end of the mission says, If you mow Shemam Aleichem, that means remember, with all the Ava that you're serving Hashem, there's also an aspect of Yerush Shemayim as well. The Me'iri says the same thing as well. And the Me'iri says as well that when you serve Hashem with love, you become like a Ben Bayis. You become like Haimish with Hashem. Like he's your friend, so to speak, which is, which is a good thing. But there has to be a level of trepidation, says the Me'iri. And that's why you have to be very, very careful to make sure to serve the Rabbi Nishlanim always in a way that there will be an aspect of Yerida. And I want to mention a couple of other beautiful, very, very important points as well on this Mishnah. You know, although, of course, we believe that there's reward for mitzvahs and there is punishment for our various as well. It's a Mishnah later on. 
Right, it's actually one of the Shlosh Shrei, the 13 principles of faith that we say in the Rambam, those of us that say it after Shachos every day. But at the end of the day, yes, we believe in it, but that's not the reason we serve Hashem. In other words, it's almost like the Chinuch. When the Chinuch writes the time for a mitzvah, he tells us the reason for mitzvahs, which is beautiful. He tells us the reason for mitzvahs. But it's very important to remember that's not why we do a mitzvah. And that's what the Mishnah is telling us. Of course we believe there's a reward. Of course the Rabbi Nishram is rewarding us for every tiny little mitzvah, every halacha you learn, every little word of Torah you learn is unimaginable reward. Every time you close your mouth and don't say a word of Lashonah, whatever it may be, there's tremendous reward. But that's not why we do it. And that's not why we do it. And it's almost like, I'll tell you what it's like. Once I had a beautiful marshal. You know, when you were a kid and you didn't want to go to the dentist, so your parents came to you and said, you know what, if you go to the dentist, I'll take you to the toy store and you'll buy something. All right, you know what, great, a kid, what, what better could there be to go to the dentist and go to the toy store afterwards? You know, when you get older, you don't need to be told and given rewards for going to the dentist because you know that you need to go to the dentist. So it's the same thing. When we were kids, maybe we need rewards for mitzvahs and understand. But when you get older and you get more mature, you realize how much the Rabbi Shem does in every one of our lives. And sometimes we do have to stop and think about everything like that. You know, there's a Mordecai Maitre, the Chovetz Chaim. They once overheard the Chovetz Chaim making an accounting. Listen to this. It's incredible. Accounting with the Rabbi Nishalaylam. He made an accounting. He said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, what, what have you done so much for me? What have I done for you? You've given me the privilege, the Chofetz Chaim speaking, you've given me the privilege of writing the Sefer Mishnah Bura, Chofetz Chaim, Shmir Saloshan, Lukute Alochas, and so many others for him. What have I done for you? Nothing. Rabbi Nishman, give me an opportunity to do something for you. Now, you would uh, take that, it's, it's unbelievable. The Chofetz Chaim did so much for Klal Yisrael. He did so much for Yiddishkeit. But on his level, he understood how much the Rabbi Nishman gave him. For him, it was nothing. And that's what is going on over here. The Abar Benel brings it down and he comments over here on the Mishnah that the, uh, what's going on over here in the Mishnah when, when we say in the Mishnah Antignos, he's referring to tangible reward in this world and the Mishnah means don't serve the Rabbani Shem in, reward, in order to receive a world in this, reward in this world because as the Gemara tells us in Gedushin Daf Lamed Tesem and Beis Mitzvah Baha'i Al Maleka there is no reward in this world for any mitzvah and I want to tell you Amoyed Gazach Rishon Shadron Rishon Shadron is the Maggid of Yushalayim he once had a beautiful explanation in explaining this Mishnah and he said can you imagine if you have a shop, you have a store, and it's Erev Yontif, and it's packed, and everyone's in the store, it's, ja it's, it's completely jam-packed, bumper to bumper, the, the queues at the checkout are crazy, it's unbelievable. Everyone's trying to get their Yontif, you know, shopping done. It's a crazy matzav. At the corner, on the second floor, there's, there's a window there, and there's an office there. The manager of the store is sitting in that office and he has video cameras. He can see the store. He can see the place is booming. He's smiling. He's enjoying it, right? He doesn't think for one moment, maybe I should go downstairs, roll up my sleeves and do something. You know, they need help with the checkout. They need help with the delivery thing. They need help with the restocking. Something. I, I, I'm sitting here. I've got all the time in the world. You know, it's very nice in my nice leather chair to sit here and watch what they're doing. But maybe I should do something. He doesn't think to do that. The other side of the street is another store, similar store, also jam-packed busy. Jam-packed busy. And the manager of the store there, he's got his, you know, he's got his shirt dirty, he's over there, he's running to the car, he's running to the delivery, making sure things are happening. What's the difference? He says, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'll tell you the difference. The first store, the manager of that store was a manager who had no shaykhs to the owner. He had no shaykhs to the store, he gets paid, and he doesn't do um, 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 uh, any, any more work than he had to do. So he does whatever he had to do and that's it. Whereas the manager of the other store was a manager that was the son of the owner. So for him it made something. Now he's not getting paid. Neither of them would have got paid any more to help or neither of them got not paid to get more. So they're not helping in order to make more money. The manager of the second store is not helping an heir of Pesach in the store because, oh, I'm going to get a raise or I'm going to get extra credit. He's doing it because that's what I need to do. I love this store. This is my father's store. I need this store to continue. And that's what's happening exactly over here. What said of Shalom Shadron, a you said in this Mishnah. The way we serve the Rabbi Nishalim is not, you know, I do what I have to do. I do the mitzvahs, leave me alone, I'm okay. No, no, no. It's more than that. 
we try to serve the Rabbi Nishlam in a way like that son. We're a son. The Rabbi Nishlam gives us so much. He gives us so much in our lives. Take a moment to think of the little that we try and do, which obviously the Rabbi Nishlam doesn't need our Avodah. He doesn't need our mitzvahs. He doesn't need our Torah, Be'etzem. But he wants it. He wants our mitzvahs. He wants our Torah. And it means so much to him. But the way we react and the way that we, we deal with it is what the mission over here is telling us, which is again, a yesoid in Kabbalah said Torah, a yesoid in Midas Tovus, it's a yesoid in everything in life, to realize that that's the way to serve the Rabbi Nishram, like a son to a father would serve his son, serve his father, is the way that we serve the Rabbi Nishram. That I think is a very nice explanation of this Mishnah. Okay.